This episode is supported by Battlefilm.com. And remember to join us for Wild West Exit this week, starting October 2nd. Hey everyone, welcome to The Weekenders. Time for another hour-long chat about what's been happening tabletop-wise. I'm joined by Mr. Az, Mr. Justin, and Mr. Ben. Wasn't that an old cartoon? Flyerbot man. Yeah, it <laughs> no, is. It Mr. Was, ben, yes. was that not an old cartoon where Mr. Ben would go to the costume yeah, store? Yeah, he would. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And try things on. He would yeah. indeed. You see, we have no idea what Ben is actually wearing under here. That man could be wearing no pants. It is a negligee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course, Lloyd. And it's time to get stuck into another another roundup of what's been going on this week. But yep. before we do that, let's give a shout out to Wild West X this week that's mm. coming next week on the channel. Yes. And we have an amazing amount of prizes to give away. Yeah, we have 10 starter sets to give away for Wild West Exodus. 10! <laughs> and uh, if you've been following along, 2nd edition is so, so good. You really yeah. need to give it a look. You're going to so, get a chance to meet all the factions, you're going to get a chance to see some games played, you're going to get to see Justin getting destroyed, probably. Yeah. So no what, spoilers. No watch spoilers. out for it kicking <laughs> off on Monday. 10 prizes. Yeah. Uh, you can pick from any one of five starter sets. Uh, yeah, I believe it's Warrior Nation, Union, Outlaws, oh, who else? Put you on the spot now. Outlaws Enlightened. Yeah. Oh, there's one more there. You're almost yeah. there. Oh, there's one more there. It's right on the tip of my tongue, but I can't remember. Is this the order? No, no, it's, no, not, no, the no order. it's not the order. It's not the watchers. Uh, it's been on screen. There's lots of choices. Yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> right. Now, uh, a few other announcements before we get stuck into the show proper. Mm -hmm. Some Drop Beast success. We have, a, we have a, a, a clan sort of club gaming thing called the Drop Beasts and they play Drop Zone Commander and Drop Fleet games. Yeah. It's basically members from BeastsofWar.com who go to events as the Drop Beasts for Drop Fleet and Drop Zone Commander. Yeah. And they've ha recently been to a tournament and had their best result ever. Oh wow. Yeah. Do, we, do we sponsor them? Do we give them Do we give them like little mascot names and stuff? Do we have, do we have a uniform? Well, they have a t-shirt made. They have oh, a t-shirt. Oh nice. They have a t-shirt made, yeah. <laughs> we have branded them to the balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Top uh, to I balls. I, yeah, I have them here. So you can see here is drop these t-shirts. Oh yeah. Love it. Look at Rob's smiling face there. I think oh, he's so happy. Is there a, I think there's a bigger logo on the back. But anyway, they've had yeah. their best results ever. So what we have, we have James Barry has had four wins and one loss and got third place. Yeah. Nice. Sweet. <laughs> We've had Stephen Jones's two wins, two losses and one draw. Yeah. That yeah. still sounds pretty cool. Yeah. We've had Canon. Canon the, the UCM. That yeah. that, that bit, it's easy the Canon is that Nathalid left. <laughs> Someone, someone, someone butcher that name for me. <coughs> Nalana Than. Nalana Than. Nalana Than. Well done. That's what no, 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 no. we're saying. <laughs> Some form of English. We've had Jonathan Brown, two draws, three losses. Got the best sportsmanship. Best sporting. And I believe that's what, like the second time or fourth, fourth time, time or something? Yeah. That one of them's got best sportsmanship. I love yep. it. That says everything cool. about our community, really, doesn't yep. it? And well, done. Very own well done on that. Rob, uh, Commodore Rob, yeah. got the best painted with one win and four losses. You know, it, Rob and these best painted things. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize, Rob, you were such a painter because he, at he scored the on boot camp. at the Volson yeah, Bootcamp as well. Yeah. He talked himself down as well. He was saying, I'm not that good a painter. I'm not good as these other guys here. And I sat and watched him. I was blown away by how good he was. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, Rob. Rob, I hear you're getting rid of a, 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 an army of aliens, by the way. Call me. Watchers. Call me. <laughs> Dude, that's especially if they're painted. That's creepy. What? Why is it creepy to go to someone over the internet? Call me about your aliens. Call me on my cell phone. <laughs> right, uh, continuing on with the updates. We have another update to shout out. We have Warlord's 10th anniversary is coming up. This yep. is absolutely epic. So this is going to be happening in Nottingham. This is going to be happening in their HQ. I think yeah. they're selling up to 300 tickets, I believe. Don't quote me on this, but at the time of filming, you can still get some tickets for it. And there's a horrendously large amount of people going to be attending. So you're going to have the likes of Rick Priestley's going to be there. You're going to have the guys from Warlords like John Stallard. You're going to have Paul Sayer. Uh, you're going to have Andy Chambers, Alessio Cavatori. And just saying, on the special guest list is Visa 4. <laughs> oh, we made the special guest list. Yeah. So Ben is going to be there. We yeah. might actually have some other members of the team joining Ben as well because it's going to be a pretty cool event. You're going to be able to take in introductory games of all their systems, every single one of them. So you know, Antares, Doctor Who, Bolt Action, right down to Test of Honor. If you've never tried the Samurai yeah. stuff, Contact Forty Seven. Yeah, everything's going to be there, so you can get a chance to test it all. But then they're also going to have little setup things for sculpting, for painting, um, oh, man. mold making. Like there's going to be lots of activities you can take part in. Two days. 14th and 15th oh, it's of two October. Days. Two days. Oh. Um, I believe we're only going to be there on the Saturday. 
So well, we're we sending not? Ben. Ben, yeah. are you going on the Saturday, mate? Yeah, going on the Saturday, yes. Are you taking a TV screen with you? <laughs> I should do, or at least like the outside of a TV screen. With Otherwise, no, 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 no. we need to make sure you're recognised no. because like you're on the special guest list. Hang far. <laughs> he has to go to an old, like, crappy second-hand store and yeah. find an old mirror, knock the mirror out of it, and then just walk around with the frame. <laughs> do his fantasy I think we version. could get him a Segway with a monitor on top. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, exa yeah, exactly. Yeah, do the... Okay. I'm thinking more of the Sheldon Cooper robot thing. Or I was thinking more of his, his <laughs> fantasy aspect where in it's just fact, in the mirror. If we built the Sheldon Cooper robot, we could send Ben to events all over the world and he wouldn't even have to get dressed. Well, he we could just, sit there in his Just pants. like he normally does. We just have to <laughs> get him done for shipping. Yeah. Do you ever, do you ever watch <laughs> Twitch, like the, the, the website where you can watch people play games and they do Twitch plays where yeah. they let people play the games, but it's the community typing in commands. Yeah. So that it's basically whatever the community type gives the instructions. So they've completed Pokemon, I think they did something. They've done a bunch of different games. It takes a long time, but they generally get there. Right. We could give the Beast of War community control over a robot, Ben. Wow. And just let him loose around conventions. I, I don't know, because that could go horribly wrong, knowing some of our community members. It so. would just be Ben stroke your beard. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> oh, Ben, give us a wee wave. Yeah. Sexy Furious. Yeah. Oh, oh. that's all. That like was it. very easy. He jumped at that. <laughs> <laughs> He's voice operated. Who would have thunk it? Yeah. <sighs> I've just noticed. When did Ben? Ben, you're not wearing glasses anymore, man. Did you get contacts? Am I? Uh, am just... I late to the party on this? <laughs> no, no, no. It's just, since we started doing the Sexy Furious thing, he's he's going for it. He's actually no, dropping no, but, straight in. It, there. It, it, it's because every time we get comments on the weekend, it's like, I can see your screen in your glasses, so I take my glasses off for the weekend now. Oh! <laughs> that makes so much more sense now. So yes, yeah. thank you, community, for making Ben blind <laughs> for the weekender. We appreciate that. <laughs> and then I thought, I thought it was just like sexy looks. It's really just squinting trying to see the screen. Yeah, yeah that, what you're seeing is the random twitches of his eyes trying to catch up. Um, uh, yeah. So, 10th anniversary of Warlord Games. Come along, get your tickets. It's going to be a fantastic couple of days. You can buy one-day tickets as well if you just want to do. And it's in their big HQ store, it's isn't it? it? Yeah, exactly. So you're going to have a real nosy around to be poop in the underbelly of Warlord Games. Do we have a picture of that? Do we? We do now. Oh, well. Maybe we can bring them up on the screen. Right. We're almost through announcements and stuff, but we've got winners. Winners from the boot camp. Yep. Oh, yep. man. Anybody remember what they win? Two-player starter bundle. So you had the... the Two single-player starter yep. sets. Rule book. Uh, the rule book, the cards and the dice. Yep. Uh, we had three sets of that to give away, one for each day of the event, and we have now chosen our winners. Which I am not going to read because I don't want to butcher names. Oh, you should have because <laughs> these aren't too bad. <laughs> right, Justin. Go ahead. Do it. Do it. George Seeley is our first winner. I believe I've said that right, yes? Yeah. Okay. Just I wanted him a bit more. George Seeley, winner. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. While, winner. Oh, yeah. That's W-H-I-L-E. Yeah, yeah. while. Wow. Yep, while. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And then we have uh, Cyborg Goblin. Oh, yeah. Cyborg Goblin. Yeah. Uh, I'm just pronouncing it Cyborg Goblin. It's okay, so Cyborg Goblin, George Seeley, and Wild, you guys have all won the two player starter sets for Volsong. Get over to beastofwar.com. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, in the top right hand corner, which will be over there, actually, yeah. on beastofwar.com, make sure to go and claim your prize because we don't want Justin having more factions to beat me with. What? Exactly <laughs> what he said when you're done jammy dancing. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> right. Now, let's get stuck into the show proper. Yep. Yes. Now, first up, Justin, I believe you were having a chat with um, uh, Lukash, or yes. Wukash, okay. from Marco uh, Art. Yeah, we call him Lukash, but his actual name is Wukash. Wukash. Because That's how it's said. Polish pronunciation. Oh my word, you could have told me before the Voss under camp. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Wukash. Uh, yes, basically myself and Lukash are sitting down to have a chat about the, the updated Hard Foam Terrain uh, Kickstarter yep. that should be going live today from Michael Art Studio. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, without further ado, we'll be right back. Fame and fortune awaits in Blood and Plunder. Set sail in the golden age of piracy and claim the riches of the Caribbean at beastsofwar.com. Fight for the Iron Kingdoms as a warcaster. Take control of the mighty jacks, arcane devices and dark sorceries to bring the fight to the War Machine Hub on beastsofwar.com. Hi everybody, I have been joined in the studio by Lukash from Mike Art Studio and he has some big news for everybody out there. So Luk Lukash, what, what are you guys working on? What's been brewing in Mike Art Studio? Well, Mike Art has been uh, working on some uh, new terrain uh, to expand our existing clients. Uh, this is a new terrain uh, that uh, adds and expands on the, our hard form terrain. Mm. Uh, so basically the idea behind this is that it's a 
big, uh, easy to assemble, quick to paint, and easy to transport because they are lightweight and durable. Mm. Uh, and then you have all of it in a one box, and they are uh, thematically uh, there are different uh, themes uh, behind it. Mm. So we are starting, I think, with two. Okay. And there are plans for more. We have some more ready. Mm. Uh, and virus stages of completion. Mm. <laughs> well, you see, th this is the thing I always like about the hard foam terrain from you guys. It's a very robust terrain set. So, I mean, like, if you knock it off the table, it's not just going to shatter into a million yeah. pieces. It's actually going to take the, the grind and wear of maybe being in a club. Yes. You know, or just in a general gaming well, environment. It, it might uh, be a bit damaged while, uh, when it falls, like, but it's not uh, destroying the whole... Uh, the, well, the whole I mean, like, it might take a dent. It's hard yeah. foam. It'll, yeah. it'll squish before it'll break. Yes. You know. uh, now, you say we have two variants, and you've given me some images to show off here. So uh, I'll call up the first one here. So what is this set? Uh, this is the Outpost set. So this is the most generic sci-fi set uh, that we could uh, come up with. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is good for like, games like, I would say, 40K mm -hmm. or Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, or I maybe even Infinity. Infinity. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Now, he, I, have to, I do have a question. I know that the big buildings are all definitely hard foam, same for the hill. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the ruins? Are well, they hard foam too? The ruins are, the ruins are resin. Mm -hmm. uh, the re uh, resin casts and they are designed uh, to be uh, basically uh, ruins of the smaller buildings over mm -hmm. there. Uh, so we can actually see the same uh, patterns uh, mm -hmm. uh, appearing on them. Uh, and uh, well, they will come with the MDF bases, so you ah, can uh, glue good. them on. Yeah, so that's you have the, um, you have to glue them on to, to the bases, but uh, the area of the area terrain, yeah, uh, it actually defines it. Pretty, uh, yeah, it's clearly defined. Mm -hmm. uh, they will also have some of those uh, smaller scatter things uh, mm -hmm. over there, and uh, this uh, will also be possible for for the people to actually fill in the larger bases uh, mm -hmm. for the models, like. Titans or some oh, other yeah, things. Yeah. yeah. Now, important question. Uh, the mat that this is on, are you guys going to be making this as well? Yes, we'll be making a mat. This is a complete package with mm -hmm. the mat. Uh, the mat is, uh, I think this is uh, our old uh, uh, outpost design, mm -hmm. but there will be a new redesigned version with the, with the Kickstarter, with the terrain. So there is a brand new mat uh, with some cleanup and uh, mm -hmm. nicer textures. And uh, our second package will also come with this, uh, with this new mat. Okay, uh, well, I, I have more images here. So I believe this is your Tau Seti range, yeah? Yes, this is Tau Seti. So as you can imagine, it works very well with 40k uh, blue aliens. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yep. And uh, it is also uh, quite futuristic you looking. Yeah, it's very futuristic. Depending on the paint scheme you give this, that could be a very, very nice sort of Yu Jing sort of table if you painted it up in the Eugene sort of color scheme. Well, yeah, the, the round edges with Infinity is a, a bit of a problem, but mm. then you have the ruins, then you have all the uh, smaller mm. terrain uh, that you can use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm, uh, I'm guessing the ruins again are resin? Uh, yeah, the, uh, the ruins are resin, mm -hmm. and they are again uh, the, uh, the designs from the smaller buildings, uh, like the mm. smaller huts. I could imagine that uh, this would also look great on, let's say, Oof. Tatooine. Wow. I'm sorry, just, just wow, whenever you see actual miniatures on it, it really brings yeah. it to life. And uh, the mat is designed to go well with them. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a, like a new, uh, also a new design. It was never uh, shown before, I believe. Mm -hmm. <coughs> lovely. Absolutely lovely. Now, is it just these two sets, or are you hoping uh, There to will be more. There will, there will be, be more. more. Uh, we, uh, in the Kickstarter? Or? In the Kickstarter. Oh, so yeah. that, I'm guessing that's stretch goals? Yeah, that's stretch goals. We have to have some stretch goals for the Kickstarter to mm -hmm. get it flowing. Uh, uh, I think there will be some uh, more alien mat mm -hmm. and alien terrain because we, you know we are already doing these uh, alien things, uh, yes. so we will expand on those. Similarly, are these the, the spiky terrain set that you do? Yeah, the spiky terrain set. Mm -hmm. uh, so there will be a mat uh, a bit like a creep, Ooh. maybe yeah, for, from the from the Starcraft, uh -huh. and uh, then uh, the, 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 there are those big terrain pieces, and they will also be replicated in the, uh, in the style of uh, of the of those. Uh, alien spiky bits. Yeah, well, you see, th this is this is nice because I mean, like so far, you guys have done really nice, just individual pieces. To see it all being coalesced into one nice, big, complete table that people can just go, I like that. Boom, I'll have that. 
and just have a, an epic backdrop that they can just instantly lay out from a coherent set yeah. is really good. Yeah. And it's also not really uh, explored uh, on the market with the different settings, like different alien worlds. They are mm -hmm. mostly are just like generic human cities. Uh, yeah, or sci-fi like, industrial stuff. Yeah, something like this. So, so the outpost is pretty like, like, like so the generic sci-fi set, but yeah. uh, the Tau Seti and the, the, the uh, I think it's called the Hive, Mm -hmm. uh, the the alien one uh, will be exploring like those mm -hmm. more uh, more uh, concrete like uh, mm -hmm. uh, alien things. Yeah, and so basically, whenever people are jumping in on this Kickstarter, so I assume they're pledging for a table. Yeah? Yes. Yes. Now, can they go for multiple tables if they really uh, want? Well, I, I'm sure there will be add-ons. Mm. Uh, I'm sure there there will be add-ons for. Uh, I don't know if the add-on will uh, allow you to pick a, another table, but I'm, I'm sure I think mm. that's feasible. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, like, it's it's lovely stuff, and I always love the idea that you guys come out with for your terrain styles is making it so different to the usual, you know, boxy cities and stuff that we've seen for years and years and years. Like, fine, I love a good, you know, ruined gothic city, but there are times whenever I do want to just fight on an alien world, whenever I want to be in an environment that's just so different. Like, uh, years ago here in the studio, we made a, a Necron table, and it was all black volcanic rock and stuff with big green glowing crystals mm -hmm. and stuff running through mm -hmm. it. And having that kind of an environment really changes how you feel about the game that you're playing. You know, it feels like you're invading somewhere else. It doesn't feel as if you're just laying yes. out two random armies to have a random fight. Yeah, you can put a bit more story behind it's it. It's especially great for clubs mm -hmm. or, or tournaments or uh, for tournament organizers because then you have this uh, uh, great visual di uh, differentiation between the tables. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, even, even here in the studio, whenever we do our, our gaming days, I love it whenever we just set up two long bays of tables. And those bays are just coherent all the way down. It looks like just one big massive table, mm -hmm. one big massive terrain scape. Ah, well, look, Ash, uh, I am really excited for this. I assume the Kickstarter should be running now. Yeah. Should be running now. Should be running now. All being well. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's one to check out. I think everybody, you should really go and have a look at it because having complete coherent tables for your gaming really does enhance your gaming experience. At least that's, that's what I've always found. Uh, other than that, drop the comments below. What would you maybe hope to see from the MicroArt ranges dropping in on this Kickstarter? Uh, myself and Lukash will move on here. We'll see you in the next one. Oh, um, hi, I'm uh, Rob from Mantic Games. Uh, I'm definitely not stealing all of Beast of Force things. Um, yes, goodbye. Oh, and you're watching The Weekender on BeastOfWar.com. Always love some terrain. It's so nice more in the market's better for me. <laughs> well, it's, it's nice to see the guys revisiting the Tau City stuff and the more industrial set. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually have uh, John doing a full painting vlog on both these sets coming out very, very soon. So keep your eyes peeled for and that. And the really cool thing about that is actually we're not just talking about it's for use for 40k. We're also yes. talking about it's used for Star Wars as well. So looking yes. at how you could potentially paint the terrain and have it be multi-purpose with Star Wars Legion coming out oh, in the yes. start of next year. You want to make use as much of your train as you can. So yeah, yeah. That very, very good vlog from John, giving that mm -hmm. detail. Oh man, I can't wait now. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, I'm getting excited with the Star Wars leads and stuff. <laughs> really? Well, Lion, here's a question for you. Yeah. Because I haven't had a chance to ask you this. Whenever we were actually doing reporting on Star Wars Legion, I have to wonder, what was your reaction back here in Ireland? Basically just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take that. I will take that. Basically, that's what it was. Apparently, at... <laughs> at the, the, the designers of the game have said they're not something they're going to go to straight away, but at ats could potentially fit into the scale of the game. Oh, mm -hmm. man. Apparently, roughly, you're talking about four to six feet long. Yeah. So it's going to make up the majority of the table, uh, but it's the height that's actually the issue. Because at ats aren't actually that long, and they're not wide at all, but their height is the yeah. problem. For our American audience who's going mental, at at <laughs> at, -at. Which is weird because I say at at, but I say ATST for the other ones. So yeah. really you should say ATAT. -AT. Yeah. I am a bit surprised with that because we did the whole Battle of Hoth thing mm -hmm. a couple of years back, yeah, yeah, and yeah. we used the actual Kenner type toy oh, at at. Yeah, although I think. And scale wise, compared to the 28mm miniatures, we were all looking at it going, looks pretty bad. But believable. bear in mind, that was X Wing, so they were fighters. Whereas no, this, no, no, oh, we did it with actual 28mm oh, Star Wars figures. Oh, wow. We did a different one for X Wing where we did Endor. Yeah. Oh, that's so yeah, cool. But we may have got the skill wrong and just not cared. Let, yeah, let's wait, be honest but with what I'm it. saying is I wouldn't care if it was that size yeah. because my eye looked at it and went that's believable enough yeah, okay. yeah, it doesn't Absolutely. need to be four feet it yeah, could be it could be yeah but I don't have a, <laughs> like, like, well, you don't have space for a four foot at, at. look at the hobby hole 
Just look, no, get up, go look at the hobby hole. <laughs> You're still only going to fit like about 50 of them in there. That's how you do. Well, guess what you're doing for your next terrain challenge? Oh, God. 50 add ads. Yeah. Uh, no, what I'd actually love to do for a terrain challenge is an indoor table, but I will think about that a little bit more before taking anything else to the community. But we did an indoor table with X-Men. I mean, a 28 mil indoor table. Oh, that's ideas. a lot of trees, man. I have ideas, lot. though. That'd be a tremendous amount of work. Yeah. Had to be done. Had to be done. Moving on. Moving on. Let's yes. look at our first news item. Ben, I'm going to come with, to you with this. What's up first, mate? Uh, yep, so first up we're looking at some stuff out of uh, Mantic Games, so we've got an exclusive look at what's coming in December for Kings of War, and this was some looking at uh, some of the models that are going to be there oh, for both yes. the uh, Salamanders and the Forces of Nature, and this is the Greater Fire Elemental, which looks absolutely amazing, and also some of its smaller Fire Elementals as well that will go alongside it in the army. Now these are, these are models that are looking absolutely insane i just love the look of these they've all been done in-house by their resin production crew which is really cool to see and i think the paint jobs on these are superb as well but yes some awesome looking elementals to get stuck into for kings of war to mm -hmm. begin with yeah yeah and we have the vampire on the, the undead dragon as well yeah, so uh, the Vampire and the Undead Dragon was one that we looked at uh, a couple of weeks ago on the weekend, uh, maybe a little bit further away, uh, when it was in sort of like the first teaser stages, and we weren't quite sure how it was all going to come together. But I actually think that as a whole, the monster is actually looking very cool, and I really like the way that they've done the skull with sort of like the sort of rotting flesh and the bone underneath it. It looks incredibly uh, terrifying, which I thought was really cool. So yeah, oh, some sweet. amazing stuff for Kings of War going forward. I'm sweet. not going to lie, but like, I think the fire elementals oh, are stealing it there. The fire, like, especially the smoke effect they've got at the bottom, where they've got it roiling and then changing into the fire yes. and working up. Yeah. They've mm. done an amazing job of that. So the, and then they've got that rock, that magma kind of um, mm -hmm. sediment kind of built into it as well. I was blown away yeah. when I saw these. The, the, that inner dungeon, dungeon master just wanted to get <laughs> D&D going and get some fire elementals to burn in it, my, uh, my party. Yeah. Burn in it? Burn in it. Burn in it. Burn in it. Oh. Oh. What's, what's that from? That's a trog door. That's trog door. Oh, Jerry's building cool. an army full of these. He's right. been painting at them for weeks. I could borrow a couple. And then just... he, and he, put up, he put up a picture. And I was looking at it going, this is weird. And then I realised what he was talking about. He was talking, he was doing black static grass mm -hmm. for burnt grass. Yeah. Oh, and I was like, right. oh, I never <laughs> thought of that. And then I, I was right trimming my beard the next day. No. And I was looking at no. the sink going, oh my God. No. I don't even need to buy this stuff. No. This would be, no. 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 Does it, would it continue no. to grow? No, because no, it's dead. <laughs> Hair's dead. Mm. As soon as it comes out when you your die, face, your hair continues to grow. Yeah, it's because yeah. your face yeah. retracts. Oh. Mm. Yeah, and then your fingernails continue to grow as well. Oh, because you retract. Ew. It's your skin retracts. Really? Yeah. So they're not actually it was... growing, it's actually just no, your No, it's body. just you shrinking like a prune. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. That could dark think, really fast, I'm sorry. Think, yeah. think a hairy... No, no, no. no. A it's hairy, okay. a hairy so, as prune. No, thanks. I said as prune. <laughs> <laughs> Where did this go? Okay, <laughs> but yeah, the black sided grass yeah. is a flipping amazing idea. And they yeah. look sweet. Yeah. He brought them all up, and it was a total cluster thing on the table <laughs> going on between him and his opponent. They were just everywhere. And I looked over and I went, I don't know what the hell's going on, but it looks epic. Yeah. Love those fire I'm a fan. I'm a huge fan. Cool. Um, and their campaign is coming to end when, Ben? Uh, so it comes to end this weekend. So if you've still got some games you want to try and get into for Edge of the Abyss, it's still rolling up. The bad guys versus good guys still going on. Get stuck in there. Get your games recorded and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, maybe you will change the fate of Mantica for the better or the worst in the future. Yep, so, people yeah, people have been rocking the campaign the last couple of weeks now. For about three weeks, there's been nothing but Mantic uh, Kings War games galore going on here. <laughs> Jerry Dude. and Clive playing away. I've had games. Yeah. Uh, we've introduced some other players to games. Did you did you manage to get a game in? Uh, no, no, because oh. last weekend, yeah, uh, Papa Nurgle came to visit. He's oh. still not left me just yet. Uh, the weekend <laughs> before that, I was in painting, and the weekend before that was Hobbit Night Live, I think, possibly. Is Papa Nurgle like secret code for something? Yeah. No, no, no. The Lurgy. The Lurgy. I, I, I caught a bug. Oh. So, oh. Chaos God Nurgle. Got uh. a death and decay. Right, I was thinking. Got it. That. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. I think you all got it. <laughs> moving on, moving on, moving on. But do do try and get your last games yeah. in this weekend because yeah. it's been epic. Moving on, we've got some stuff coming out for uh, Flames of War. What are we all looking at here, Ben? Uh, yeah, so this is some of the additional uh, unit boxes and stuff for the fighting first. These are the uh, Americans who have entered into the African conflict in Flames of War ah, 4th yeah. edition. 
So yeah, we're kicking off with the M3 Lee tank platoon, which is a good start for a little bit of an armoured backbone here, as well as some N M10 tank destroyers as well. Um, included within that as well, some things that I really like to see is some more infantry on the tabletop, because we see a lot of games of Flames of War where a lot of their sort of focus is on the big armour and the tanks and stuff, but it's always nice to see soldiers there too. Um, so we've got some infantry support in the form of an anti-tank gun and also a mortar platoon as well, which I thought was very, very cool. There's a big thing for me, I think, is this the same box bin that's coming out with the command cards and like the mission cards as well? Um, yeah, so yeah, so one of the other sides to this is the command cards and the mission cards you were saying there. So the command cards are the kind of things you can use to sort of buff and change your army to give it a little bit more character and a bit of sort of like a narrative flair to it as well, which I thought was really cool. And yeah. And it, sort of tie, it sort of ties it into the sort of um, historical generals that were there at the same period as well. Uh, uh, yeah, because the, the Americans, the, this aspect of the fighting uh, first, this is a new part of the game, isn't it? And how they're tying the narrative in to make, you know, and the, specifically the design of their tanks and, and bringing the kind of... Um, the upgrades and how you can change how you deploy the units is actually a really cool thing to me. And I like that seeing this so early in the release of those troops is actually really cool. Mm. Yeah. No. And the other thing as well, as well is it also ties in um, some sort of secret objectives and secret things you can do during your game as well. So you can almost pay a couple of points for your army and then surprise the, your enemy with a couple of sort of interesting uh, tactical maneuvers and stuff on the tabletop, which I thought was really cool. Ooh. And it adds almost a sight of um, like uh, fog of war aspect to things, which I thought that was awesome. Cool. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, and this also goes into the mission cards as well, uh, which allow you to set up some interesting and sort of in, uh, sort of different scenarios. Um, so, say you're you know used to playing the same scenarios over and over again from the rule books, this gives you a little bit of sort of like a, a randomness to how it all uh, sort of comes together on the tabletop. So yeah, sweet. Nice. And I love the M10 tank destroyers. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. man, a whole platoon of those. Let's do them <laughs> again. They need to be seen again. And whoever's done the paint job on these is a sweet little paint job too. Yeah, yeah really nice. punchy looking. Mm -hmm. Love the love the yellow sort of stripey stuff on the other. Uh, the other tanks too was looking sweet. Right, moving on. Yeah, we've got stuff for the Walking Dead. To yeah, talk about oh man. So Walking like Dead. this is really nice because we have three so yeah. really just hit in full force. So you can start getting wellied into that if you want. You know, mm. and I think they're doing a really good <laughs> job of continually bringing out new, fresh storyline stuff. What they've done then is if you've been regretting not getting on board with the Kickstarter or you've been wanting to get into to Walking Dead All Out War, we now have a collector's edition where you can basically get yourself right up to speed and there's exclusives in there. You want to walk us through the exclusives, Ben? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, they've uh, packed this with a couple of the different exclusives that you would have seen at shows and things like that. So one of them is Lee and Clementine, which was it's available at at Gen Con as well, so you'll be able to pick up both Lee and Clementine. There's also an exclusive Walker version of Rick Grind, which is really cool, and there's also a few bits and pieces in there in terms of uh, scenarios and terrain as well. So yeah, anything that you maybe missed out on from potentially watching the boot camp that we did last year, that might pop up in here for you to pick up and add to your collection or start things off uh, with The Walking Dead, which I think is still one of my favourite games and possibly one of my favourite game experiences on the tabletop at the moment. So yeah. And you're going to get the TV show coming back on October 22nd. Mm -hmm. So this is the perfect time if you're about to get back into it to kind of scratch that itch and give yourself this aspect as well. So yeah, that's nice. I have a question. Yeah. Is that a peg leg zombie? That, that the kind of... No, that's that the... So that's the exclusive of... What is it? No, what's his name? The guy with one leg? It's actually... Herschel? Oh, no, it's not Herschel. Herschel lost his hand. No, Herschel lost his leg, or am I thinking... I'm that getting comic is, and TV. It's the guy, it's the guy who has the hat drives the caravan. It is one-legged Dale. Yeah, oh, okay. There we go. Yeah, he's not a zombie, he's a dude. That looks <laughs> like a zombie to me. He's got no, like, fleshy hang, hanging off. He's, like, proper... Other than missing a leg, he looks proper to me. Okay, I could yes, be wrong. People without legs are people too, just. Leg, and he's know. got the nice... <laughs> you know, he's got plenty of fat on him, too. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Lee and Clementine bit as well. I don't know if any of you have ever played the, the Walking Dead yeah. Telltale series games yeah, where you yeah. get to play as Lee and Clementine. My goodness, they are emotionally traumatic. The feels. Uh, oh, the, yeah. The you, feels. Yeah, they're, they're, they're fantastic. So it's nice to see those minis in there and mm. have a bit of a real unity between what you'll do in the show, what you'll do in the comics, what you might do in the games. Like mm. I feel like the All Out War stuff covers enough so no matter what aspect of Walking Dead you're into, you're going to get something that you'll enjoy. Mm. Okay. Right, last bit of news before we take a wee, mm. wee swish. Justin, there's new Dragui. No, Dragui? Dragoi. Dragoi? Come on. Dragoi. So, <laughs> Poor guy uh, showing off stuff. They showed off something last week and they're showing off something today. Yeah, so basically, for anyone who doesn't know what the Dragoi are, basically these are people who have been infected by a curse, which basically gives them an intense, insane hunger, which drives them to feed. Uh, it unfortunately also changes how they look physically. So we're seeing some new sculpts for the Dragoi. And as you can see, 
Yeah, the plague's doing its thing big time. Give me that curse, it makes you look badass. <laughs> they, that looks freaking magic. The, the, the whole kind of <laughs> like agility stance of that pouncing yeah. over the log is really, really nice in that mm -hmm. minute. If I, if I could like hit a log and just go to stomp across it like you can, that. You can, I've seen you do it. Because I have the fever for the eating bit, so what is <laughs> If I get the power, that'd be awesome. Yeah. We see, it's, it's the thing as well, they're doing male and female variants, and basically a lot of the people who are uh, basically infected with this, mm -hmm. they think of nothing but the actual hunger that they have. So depending on how they get infected, sometimes the, the curse takes a, a fair amount of time mm -hmm. to actually take hold. So... You know, you might get scratched by one of the Dragoi or Dragul and be sitting eating your dinner and, you know, the, the dinner's not filling you. You want more and you want more Maybe and I've you want bitten. more. I think that's what my problem. I've been scratched, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually just you'll hit that critical mass point where you just go, OK, I'm eating everything in sight. By the way, my wife and kids now look rather tasty. Wow, for a minute there, I was sitting thinking, Justin's wife and kids? You've been keeping that quiet. <laughs> uh, we also have uh, another couple of This is the stuff here. that came out last week that we're going to look at now, isn't it? Yes, I believe, which is more of them. So they're doing lots of different sculpts oh my. for them. And you can see the, the clothing just becomes matted, ripped. It's not something they consider anymore. And yeah, so I think this might actually be a dwarf. Oh, yeah, man. yeah, that looks right. It's, yeah. it's a gnome version of the ah, uh, no. stalkers. Oh, cool. Oh, man. Yeah. It's nice to see that it can infect anyone. I'm yeah. really interested to see where the guys at Foreground take the storyline for this. Yeah, too often I think we see just humanoid looking zombies and skeletons and not maybe yeah. often enough see dwarf or gnome well, versions of zombies. Them. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. They're, they're still alive-ish. There used to be a regiment of renown, also like a, merc a mercenary regiment for Warhammer Fantasy back uh, maybe two editions of Before the End, uh, and it was called Richter's Cursed Company, and it came with dwarf skeletons, orc skeletons, humans, and elves, and it was one of the coolest things. So it's really nice to see uh, Foreground doing something similar and changing things up and adding in all the aw awesome races and stuff for their sort of undead and their wasted away mutants and stuff. So yeah. Okay. Since we're talking about this, um, I think there's still some, there's some tickets possibly still available mm -hmm. for the... The beta weekend yep. yes. that we're, that's being held here. Yes, and it's we're, being held next year. Yes, we're so just you sorting out time to sort your vacation time. We're just sorting out some final details, but if you head over to their pledge manager, I think that's where mm -hmm. you can get you can go and grab a ticket if you want to try and get in on that. Yep. Mm -hmm. But late pledges are ending soon. I believe it's sixth of October. So if you are interested in coming over that, get on it very very soon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. We're well, absolute news, but we're going to go for a quick break. But mm -hmm. then we're going to be back because as we're going to talk about something close to your heart, mate. We're going to be talking about some Star Wars Destiny yes. and our first sort of reactions to our first game. Yeah. So, we'll see you in a minute. From Viking halls to the cities of the future, terrain buffs will love our foreground hub. Watch gaming tables of all genres come to life at beastsofwar.com. Humanity has been driven from Earth, but now it's time to take it back. Join the reconquest and fight the scourge on the Drop Zone Commander Hub at beastsofwar.com. All right, welcome back. Look at that face. Look how excited that face is. Excited for the Destiny, man. Yes, I am. Yes, I very much am. I wasn't expecting Warren to dish out the challenge on a uh, weekender just previous there where he said he wanted to have a Star Wars Destiny tournament yep. in Beast of War in the studio. But I grabbed it with both hands and we've been getting started. That's Warren. Whips out stuff when you least expect it. And yep. you just have to take it and run with it. You, you just, just have, have to, to lay your hands on it. It right? hits you in the face and you just have to say, I'm going to deal with this right now because yep. to run away with it means it's just going to come back and get me later. Yeah. So, I, I, so I took it. I took it. Um, so in the next few weeks, probably, you guys are going to get to see all of that. But to get everyone in the studio started, we've been kind of having a little play around. And the name we're currently currently tossing around the office is... Are you ready for it? Prepare, prepare, prepare. Come here, come here. Oh. All right, this is the first time I've heard this, okay? Starter Wars. Oh my <laughs> god, it's amazing! Starter Wars! For anybody who doesn't know, we're basically going to have a tournament. Go and watch last all week's show. All about Star Wars, but also all focused on the Star Wars Destiny starter sets. Yeah. So we obviously had the newly released Star Wars two-player starter game, which mm -hmm. gives you the new Rey, the new Kylo, the new Captain Phasma, and also the new Poe Dameron. Mm -hmm. But we've also got, if you want to show them off, yeah. the old... Ray and the old Kylo yeah. starter sets in the studio now as well. So we took it upon ourselves to have a little evening where we got together and gave everyone a few chances to get behind the cockpit, I guess, of a couple of 
the Star Wars coolest heroes. Mm -hmm. No Darth Vader's, no Luke's at this point, no Yoda's yeah. yet. But you know, so we... everybody but the coolest then. Some of the, the starter stuff. Some of the yeah. So, so some of the starters. So we're we're focusing primarily on getting everybody used to playing the game, getting a chance to really sort of get into it and learn together, and then we're going to pitch it, you guys all head to head against each other to find out who's the strongest with the force. Um, I'm going to so, say this now. This game is dangerous for me. Everybody out there knows I don't like collectible card games. I unfortunately like this collectible card game. <laughs> My bank account is sitting there going, no, 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 don't do it, Justin. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Did bad plan. Now, we kept that in mind because for everyone yeah. at home, we're only playing with starter sets that you can pick up with set boxes with no other random booster pack cards or anything like that. Yeah. And the whole premise is we're just going to play with these and nothing else. Yeah. So hopefully your wallets are all safe and my wallet is well and truly safe. Not saying we won't do something in the future, but that's where we're going to start. Um, so, Justin, to get you introduced, yeah, we hopped you in with Kylo and the Stormtroopers. Uh, yeah, so I, I jumped Kinda. straight in with the dark side. You, did, um, you, took, you, you got used to that pretty quickly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, like unlike everybody else, everybody else is playing with two characters. I'm actually yeah. playing with three. So Kylo does get to rock with two Stormtroopers. This is from Kylo's original box set. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he is cheap enough um, at his own points level that he can actually take two guys with him, giving you a bit of flexibility. Also, a little bit fragile. Yeah. How did you find your first couple of games? Uh, it was actually really fun. I like playing Kylo's ability mm -hmm. in this version because this current ability is if you roll his dice and it comes up with his uh, special symbol, if I can find it, this one. So if you want to put that under camera, yeah. uh, you get to select uh, an opposing hero, That's it. Special. select a random card from your opponent's hand, and whatever the cost of that card is in resources, you do that much damage to that card. So, uh, so straight away, you're not just kind of back and forth and lightsaber battling. You're actually playing some mind games immediately out the gate, which oh, I yeah. knew you, you would like. Oh yeah, Th this is this is right up my alley. Now here here's something I did. So anybody who is a proper collectible card game player, hold on, let me just shuffle these up. Right, you're trying to pick the Kylo. All right, I'll not pick the trooper, Kylo. Try and get the Kylo, and I will cover my glasses so there's no reflections. No, 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 no. I'll no, take no. my glasses off then. There's no reflections. All right, so I need to figure out which one it is. <laughs> no, 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 I got, the but, I got but, it wrong. But Justin was doing one? very well, very well was in his initial games with reading Lloyd and Warren's gaze <laughs> and where they were looking and actually picking out the oh, big high value so cards. Yeah, yeah Justin, he, you were looking at the wrong card deliberately, weren't you? Yeah, yeah just before we go on, Justin's like, you know how I managed to pick the right card all the time? You and Warren kept looking at it. So just then I've just like crossed my eyes so you can't tell what the hell card I'm looking at. <laughs> yeah. So top tip, if anybody wants to pick a card secretly from you, don't look at it. Put it no, no. Put the card, shuffle them up and put them face down in front of you. Right. Because otherwise, if you're holding a card like this... Right, so let me shuffle these up a minute. But you've missed the whole enjoyment of trying to coax right. them to take cards. So as if I don't want you to pick a card like this, which one do you think you want to take? Kylo. That's the Kylo. Because <laughs> I'm looking at the one that I don't want him to take. <laughs> Whereas if I shuffle them up again, yeah. here's how I would actually do it if it was me against so you. So basically, pick a card. what we're saying is... It's random. Oh, I lost! So what we're saying is, we've played one or two games to get Evelyn in the office, and Justin's already laying down mind game strategies. <laughs> He's already like, this is not the card you're looking for. Like, that straight away out, out of the gate, which made me so happy, because everyone took it like a duck to water, yeah. really. I actually uh, learned that from Netrunner. <laughs> that's fine with me. Uh, so we gave Lloyd and Warren, you guys actually shared a deck a little bit. You got to play with the... Ray and, and Finn, yeah. and do you know what? This is a good point to say. How good did rolling a yeah, bunch right. of these beautifully smooth dice feel in your hand? So I was playing with. There she is. Ooh, finger. Uh, Finn Force is... Prodigy. Is that the new and one? Finn. No, these are that, that again is from the the original starter set. So that's from the Awakening Star Wars Destiny starter set. Okay. And this is the the dice. How oh, good oh, do they, they sound feel? Nice. Oh yeah. Oh, they are nice. It's hard to get it across on, on camera just how well made these dice are because they're not stickers. No. They're 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 printed into the dice, so there's no way you can get the symbols off. Yeah. They're nice and curved and round edges. They've also got a good size and good weight, so rolling these dice is just well. If you get your upgrades on and you're rolling maybe five or five six, or six, of, six these, of them, oh, that just feels nice. I. <laughs> you have to love that sound. They just clap. No, not giving anything away, but Lloyd, how was your first game with Justin? <laughs> I, I expected that I wouldn't like this game because I'm not a huge big fan of like card games and yep. stuff. Like I've tried Magic a couple of times, I never really got into it. But I have to say, <laughs> the whole combination of the cards and dice together really appeals to yeah. me. I did come out of this game going, oh shite, I think I'm going to have to play this game now. <laughs> Here's the thing though. <laughs> 
this feels more like a turn-based strategy game than a card game to me. Because you can do things in the game. Like, you have abilities and stuff in your card yeah. that will let you take, like, people's dice and get rid of one, yeah. or, or change the facing yeah. of it, or change the facing of one of your own dice. Yeah, Poe Dam is a really good example of that if you want to show him off, actually, because he's a character that comes with an innate ability built in where, essentially, if you roll the special symbol on him, you can actually give one of your characters a shield to help defend them, and you can also turn any other die to yeah. any side. So yours uh-huh. or your opponent's. So you can mitigate incoming damage they may have ready to pounce on you, or you could add in extra effects for you. Then our resources? You can deny resources. There's a whole element of, yeah, resource now is one thing, discarding your opponent's hands another, how you and when you decide to re-roll your own dice. Because at any point, you're never stuck with what you roll on your dice. If you feel like you've rolled really badly, you can just discard a card, re-roll them all again if you want to. You're yeah. never, ever stuck. I just felt like, um, maybe this isn't the case, but it's how you know, it made me feel that I, I'm sitting thinking, right, I don't have to memorise the deck as yep. much as something like magic because I can do things during the game Mm -hmm. where I'm altering dice and because we are rolling dice my opponent can't just line up a a, 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 like his ultimate wombo combo strategy all the time because there's still some uh, he still has to roll dice to be able yeah. to get it, and not only that, but I can also interfere with his plans. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, or her plans, and yeah. that's yes. cool. You're very rarely ever stuck without a way of stopping something if you see it coming. Yeah. Um, with the starter sets in particular, even though we're talking about uh, starter sets that are a year old now, mm-hmm. and then the new two-player one that's just come out, they're still relatively well balanced. And um, mm-hmm. the card game has it's gone through its third card set now. It's that's just come out, uh, Spirit of Rebellion. No, Empire at War. Sorry, <laughs> keep me right, Ben. Is that right? That? Yeah, it's the right one. Yeah. Spirit of Rebellion was second, Empire at War is the third, and it yeah. still feels pretty tight, mm-hmm. which is which is fantastic. Um, I'm I'm just wondering though if I have liked it because my first game was such an ass whipping for Justin. <laughs> now, how many BB eights did you have on the table? Well, two. We were supposed to have one, but one BB eight never yeah, did it. We're, we're but... learning the rules, so there was there was a little <laughs> yeah, bit yeah. of accidental power play. Yeah. But Ben, I know you went to a starter set tournament, which hopefully we're going to kind of chat about whenever we get to the event. We're going to talk yeah. about. All of our feelings on the decks and all of our feelings on learn to play but who did you play with ben whenever you were playing uh so the starter set tournament i went to was for the new one uh based around the last jedi yeah uh, and so it was the new the new ray and poe and all these combinations and we played with um just one set each okay so we played with a slightly cut down deck that was down to 20 cards and um we effectively played the three um the three game rule so we each played um as both hero and oh, played as villain and then we got to choose for our third game to see if we needed to. And it was really good fun. Uh, the decks, as you say, are incredibly well balanced. And they are exceptionally fun to play. Uh, and as you say, it's got this really nice element of luck built in there, but also that really nice mitigation factor as well. Yeah. And it all feels very thematically Star Wars too, which I thought was really good. And importantly, for the sort of new sets as well, it comes with those really nice uh, sort of named weapons for the characters, which I thought was a really good good spin for what they were doing with the two-player starter set. So Yeah, yeah interestingly, like, Lord, you have the cards there for Kylo and for Captain Phasma, the, the, the new version of both. Because essentially, um, we are seeing some characters repeated, but as they evolve in the lore, they're both viable. You can play with either in your deck if you want not both at the same time yeah. captain phasma in particular is actually really brutal she's like all of a yeah. sudden her previous edition she was all about getting other troops to support her now she's just a damage dealing machine yeah see yeah uh, it's, it's, <laughs> damage dealing machine justin's like and, and how much damage does she do while he's checking that out one of the things i enjoyed is i enjoyed the whole idea of like so you put your character down mm-hmm. and then you can put weapons and stuff down yep. so at one point i had <laughs> i had ray with the lightsaber i had ray with her staff and I had somebody else come along supporting Ray, giving mm-hmm. her a different ability. Yep. And I was rolling loads of dice, and I was feeling epic. I was feeling the force. Yeah, but you put Jedi robes on Finn, which I felt. You did put weird. Jedi robes on Finn at one point, which made me go. But what? it didn't say blue characters only. It did, yeah. True, it wasn't a true. restriction. Yeah. Some some of the upgrades in the game are force dependent. So, for example, Finn's never going to be able to force push or immobilize yeah. or stasis someone with the force. So he can never have that upgrade. Yeah. Giving him Jedi's robes though, completely legit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> I'm sure he was probably in the Falcon, hooking around some of the old storage bins, you know, full fine damsel. That'd pose. be pretty cool, actually. Yes, I like that. <laughs> but it, it, because you're upgrading characters and giving them abilities, and then you have support characters yep. and things like this and events that can be played, mm. it makes you, as you're playing it, think, okay, I've powered up this character in this direction, and I've powered up this character like this. And then maybe you're unlocking some more resources. Mm-hmm. You've got to manage resources through this game as well, which is cool. Yeah. Right. You've got to you've got to earn resource to be able to put these upgrades down beside characters. Mm-hmm. It makes you think: Who will I upgrade first? Uh, how will I upgrade them? Mm. And then what order will I actually activate these? Yeah. Because it's kind of it's kind of activation back and forth. Absolutely. 
And then the order in which you activate stuff is really intriguing because you're trying to goat maybe your, your, your opponent for like, you'll maybe try and activate your, what you deem to be your less useful character mm -hmm. to get them to play some of their useful abilities. So when you hit them with your good character, <laughs> I'm giving too much away. Yeah. But... It's, it's the level of strategy in it is actually pretty astounding. So we are going to have plenty of talks about the different decks. We're going to have plenty of talks uh, and, and games where we can kind of learn to play and play with, with everyone in the studio as yeah. we do play. And I think we're probably going to make a big week of it. And then yeah. we're going to have a big finale where we're going to find out who in the office is Sith Supreme or Jedi Supreme. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't, so I shouldn't assume the Sith are going to win it. <laughs> uh, I do have one question. So moving on beyond that, how do I get new characters to put into my decks? Is it all from boosters after that? Now look, I'm, I'm not going to um, you know, block your ears if you think you're liking this game because this is the point where the wallets twitch. But yes, if you want to move beyond what you're seeing in front of you here now, mm. it's booster packs that are completely random and you're always guaranteed to get a dice in the booster pack. So you're always getting a dice, but dice don't always have to relate to characters. Yeah. They can relate. A lightsaber, for example, comes with a dice. Ray's right. staff comes with a dice. Yeah. Pose blaster comes with a dice. There's also ATSTs. There's also... Um, First TIE order, Fighters, TIE fighters there's stuff, all yeah. sorts of things that come with dice. So when you buy a booster, you're guaranteed to get one, but right. that's kind of it. If you can, want more characters... Do you ever get more than one dice in a pack? Uh, no, you always get one in a pack, but you can go online and buy them directly. There are plenty of places oh, online don't, where you can don't just... Tempt me. Don't you know, tempt if you me. wanted to build a specific type of deck, you could go on and do it. I would love to build a hand Chewie deck. Uh, is Chewie in the game yet? Yes, he is, uh, isn't he? Han and Chewie were in uh, Spirit of Rebellion, yeah. I think. Uh, they may still be available if you can find some copies uh, online or if you can find booster packs and stuff. Um, but now the latest set, Empire of War, has moved more towards a focus of red and sort of yellow characters from around the era of Clone Wars. Mm. Um, so if you're interested in that side of, side of things, there's likes of Mace Windu and some really awesome bounty hunters as yeah. well. So if you like the idea of bounty hunter decks, those are out there. You can have Samuel Jackson on a card with a purple lightsaber. Yes, you can. Yeah. Is there a Jar Jar Binks? <laughs> not currently. There is no Jar Jar Binks yet, no. <laughs> Why not? Best character ever in Star Wars. Jar Jar Binks. Drive people out the room. <laughs> Default win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jar Jar's down. Table flip. So, yeah. No! So... No! You didn't just Jar Jar me, you... Ah! <laughs> yeah, the one thing I do need to get is I need to get a small toy table just to put on the gaming table beside me so that whenever I get fed up I can just flip the tiny table. <laughs> Long story short. You mean after I beat you again? Yeah. Oh. This this is what I have to deal with is rebellious. <laughs> lead to the dark side will the revenge in you two will oh, yeah. I'm I'm ready for war. <laughs> Bring it So yes, look out in the next few weeks we're going to we're going to find out who actually is the best. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. 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 Looking forward to it, lads. I'm looking forward to it. We'll go for a quick break and then we're going to come back to talk about some Kickstarters. Become a general of mighty armies at the Kings of Warhub. Take command of elves, dwarves, and orcs in this game of mass fantasy combat on beastofwar.com. It's time for 28mm World War II action. Will you recreate history or reshape it your way? On the Bolt Action Hub at BeastsOfWar.com. All right, Kickstarter time. We've got a couple of doozies to look at. Ben, mm. what's up first, mate? Uh, yeah, so the first one we're looking at is Empire of Men by Archon Studio. Uh, and so this is their campaign that is going to bring together two sets of interesting looking miniatures for you to use in your sort of sci fi and weird World War One style uh, experiences on the tabletop. So you could drop them into a whole range of different games. Uh, this sort of comes down to two factions at the moment, which is the Great Empire, yeah. which is made up of a whole bunch of uh, female miniatures which are done in some very cool, awesome sort of World War style clothing, as well as some interesting mutants and stuff thrown into the mix as well. So you've got the big guys, the big hulking brutes that are out there in the wastelands. And then on from them, we've also got the Echelon Dominion, who are slightly more sort of Geiger-esque looking, sort of maybe even elfin uh, um, sort of thing going on with them. Uh, they're sort of um, genetically uh, sort of modified and scientifically messed around with, but they've sort of got this interesting sort of mix of alien creatures from beyond the stars. And so, yeah, as I say, they've got these really nice themes going on between these two, so they work in a whole bunch of different settings, which is really cool. Um, all the miniatures as well are actually done as multi-part kits. Uh, so you might know that Archon Studio have done a lot of stuff with their unicast system, but they decided to go back to the idea of doing some really fantastic looking resin pieces in multi-part kits so that you could mess around with them, do a little bit of customization as well, and uh, get stuck into vehicles and troops and characters and all sorts of different things. 
Interesting, interesting. The, 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 the range of different walkers and stuff in, in this set is actually really interesting to me. They've got kind of what looks like kind of hover ships and things, but then they've also got what looks like mechanical horses. They've yeah. got them big walking kind of turrets. They've got there's a real diversity to the sci-fi. It's not just kind of going down one route. Mm-hmm. Can I just clarify one one faction's not all females though, is it? No, no. So the the um, as I was saying, the Great Empire. Yes, they have a sort of standard baseline of a lot of female troopers but they've also got the sort of mutants and the male characters thrown in there as well at the same time so, so yeah. it's sort of a 50 50 split yeah yeah because i was i was looking at them and i thought oh there's some really cool models and stuff yeah, in yeah. here and i was seeing a balance between female and male characters yeah and then that big beefy guy with the big shotgun thing yeah. i was looking at going oh, i really yeah. like that so this guy here yeah I think there's a thing it's better yeah, if you go, if you go a little bit further he has it right cocked over his shoulder and then it's interesting yeah, Look at yeah, that. Yeah, this. What do you see this? Look at that. Yeah, that's quite cool. So it was just the sheer scale. If you see him standing beside the other two, yeah. the lady and the and the fellow. I think that's yeah. a fella, or maybe that's two ladies. I anyway. love the sniper trooper. Yeah. Very, very cool design. But what I find interesting is I was watching the wee vid, mm-hmm. and it's basically, a, from what I gather, it's like World War One never ended, and it's now yeah. 2042 or something like that. Yeah. And... Winston Churchill the third or Emperor Winston oh, wow. Churchill Emperor the third. Winston Churchill. Yeah, he's saying, Oh, it'll probably be over in a few days and I was thinking, Oh, that's kinda cool. But <laughs> as I understand it, there's no game to this. It is just two two ranges at the minute. Yeah, so they developed a little bit of a background uh, to sort of flesh out the forces a little bit and give you an idea of how you might want to paint them and stuff. But there is actual no game behind this. It is simply for you to take away and effectively use a little bit of a toy box when it comes to your wargaming. So do whatever the hell you want with these guys as and gals, I suppose. Yeah, this, this is a weird question. I'm going to ask it because I don't know the answer. Is there any World War One role-playing games? Uh, role-playing yeah. games. Yeah, I know that might sound a little odd, but is or, or what weird setting role-playing games would these be used in? Like you would have. You don't want war games or role-playing games? Well, either. Well, not war games. Role specifically role-playing games. There's a Call of Cthulhu one that's set in. I think it's World War Two though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you went for Act on Cthulhu, which is by Modiphius, yeah. you could go down that route and use some of these characters and sort of like a uh, sort of further on through the setting potentially. Mm-hmm. Um, so sort of beyond the idea of sort of 1940, 1950. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and there was Mouser Earth. Wasn't it? Mm. Was it an actual game or is it just a range? I think it and was. And is a it game. still alive? Uh, it is still alive. I think they decided that Kickstarter maybe wasn't for them. Um, but yes, it is still existing as a range out there. Yeah. But it's just a range. It's not a game. Miles or no, is that no. Correct? I, I don't think they. I don't think they fully fleshed out the game itself. No, I think they've still just got a, a range of miniatures for it. Because so. I do really like these minis, but I actually think they're really characterful, and I'd like to see them in something like an RPG. Yeah. Um, but I didn't. There wasn't one that came to strong to mind. If you guys, anyone out there, knows uh, of any systems you could be used for, let me know in the comments. It'd be cool to hear. I think. I think you could maybe potentially take these in the sort of direction of using them in the likes of maybe Mutant Chronicle, sort of Mutant Year Zero. Okay. Sort of use them in more, almost more of a sort of dystopian yeah. kind of post-apocalyptic setting. I think that might be quite I cool. I was thinking so. that as well, and then looking at the tanks. Do we have a picture of the tank? Oh, there we go. Yeah, Perfect. So you've got the, the Wolverine car- Carrier. Oh, yeah. you hit, we see the anti hero And then below people. that, you have the, the, the little, little eagle. <laughs> so it's more of a tankette, I think. It looks as if it would be smaller. Oh. Yeah, there's quite a few games spring to mind mm. that, that, they, that these could obviously fit into. Are they a 28 mil or what are they? Yeah, 28 yeah so they're all, they're all 28 mil and they're all heroic scale. So. I quite like the robotic horse. Can we go back to that? that yes, I like yeah. this a lot, That's actually. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, although I do quite like the the mammoth assault walker. You just like mammoths. Yeah, 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 yeah. what's wrong with that? <laughs> it's, what's wrong with that? It's a little bit Dust-esque looking. Very a little bit so. more high-tech looking yeah. than the Dust version. Mm. Where's mm. the where's the anti air tank? Doesn't give it to me. Anti air uh, tank. I love it. Yeah. It's, Was it uh, one of the the keep head, yeah? Keep heading down. I think it's just an absolute beast Lovely of a looking pod. thing. Look at that too. Keep going. Keep going. Teasing um, me. Teasing oh, me. was this? It was a stretch goal that they haven't unlocked just oh, yet. All right, guys, get on it. As needs himself a stretch goal unlocked yeah, here. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, look yeah. at that. Black cannons. Wolverine. So that's what, so that's an expansion for the Wolverine. So it's going to give you a bit of versatility with the Wolverine hull. Yeah. To be able to change the turret. That's nice. Yeah, and then you've got this as well, which is the Firefly, which well, looks to be an artillery piece. It's got the Firefly means I need it. So yeah, 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 quite clearly. But are people into buying ranges? I'm all into buying ranges that don't fit into games, mm. and then I play them all the time to the point where I probably wind a lot of people up. <laughs> they're constantly fighting miniatures, and I'm like, this, 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 that, because I'm looking at the the Wild West Exodus, the mm. Watchers. Yeah. Call me Rob. Call me. You know you want to. I'm looking at the watchers because I've yeah. been I've been on this show quite a few times going on about I want a Grey's alien army. Yeah. yeah. And realistically, this is the first time I've seen a range actually be fleshed out as a full Grey's 
yeah. alien army. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of looking at that, thinking, you know, I could get those, and not just Wild West Exodus, I could probably play them in all sorts of stuff, because yeah. they're, they're sci-fi at that point. Yeah, well, I mean, like, so long as what you're proxying as is reasonably similar to what your miniature is and should be, I wouldn't complain. Yeah, I mean, there's also a lot of um, sort of tabletop games out there, especially a lot of them done by the likes of Osprey, where they don't have actual dedicated miniatures ranges. So if you find a sci-fi game out there that you really like, these are the kind of companies and these are the kind of ranges that you can use to sort of just throw into things because a lot of people obviously look at the likes of hassle free or they'll look at crooked dice and things like mm. this and maybe they'll take these and put them into other games why not do the same with you know people that are just doing whole armies in the same yeah. style rather than just characters so, yeah yeah because yeah, i'd like to I, you know if i was investing in this range which looks mm -hmm. cool both factions look cool yeah if i if it went either way mm. i'd like to be then take it and put it into all sorts of games yeah, because i don't want to have to paint ranges over and over again just I, just, a shelf. I love the idea of just paint an army that looks like it could be a lot of different game mm -hmm. systems and mm -hmm. use it and again that's the whole historical thing kind of appeals yeah. to me i actually find myself being really really beardy the other day this, <laughs> this, this picture popped up on facebook of like paper cut out regimented army yeah and i was like oh can i have me a bit of that and mm. i was looking and i was kind of talking, like thinking to myself going what the hell just happened lloyd you, you want you want a paper army? And I was oh like, yeah. <laughs> forget you buying collectible card games and you're going to be getting paper men to walk across the battlefield. <laughs> He's changing. He's changing. Getting but, older, I'm seeing the grey coming through the hair there. And I was looking at it going, yeah, this is a possibility. I could print out a paper army and just rock with it. Okay. It had Napoleonic stuff and things that I wasn't that interested in because they were very static. Yeah. Now, is this to avoid having to paint 6 mil? Uh, no, this is just to avoid having to paint too much Saga stuff because I thought, oh, I could print all this. I'm getting off topic here. I could print all this, try out the rule system, and yeah. then invest my time in the actual yeah. miniatures. Maybe, maybe. This could be a quick ass. Like, so if you oh, see yeah. me wandering around the studio photographing miniatures, <laughs> you know what I'm doing. <laughs> all right, all right. Printing minis is a big deal, though. I mean, Mythic Games, we saw their print and play stuff for the Kickstarter because obviously yeah. there's a year between funded and delivery. Yeah. It's obviously on Target 4. Great. Yeah. Um, but for the majority of that time, you could print a lot of it and play with it if you wanted to, to get comfortable with the game. So as soon as your stuff arrives, go with it. I yeah. think printing printing to test before you buy is a completely legitimate thing to do. Yeah. Oh, also, for Mythic Battles, now that we've mentioned it, uh, Leo recently did a What's Up Wednesday for the RPG that's coming along with it. Uh, he interviewed the, the guy who's writing the RPG, mm -hmm. and there's some really nice information in there about exactly what's being done with the RPG he's and how it's going to be kept similar to the main game. Oh, so cool. if if you are there, go and check out the latest updates from Mythic Battles. Okay. Anyway, cool. to bring us back on track, we've been looking at the Empire of Men mm -hmm. from yep. Archon Studio. Mm -hmm. It's looking sweet. Like the two factions, there is no game system, but there is some background. Do you think this is the sort of thing? I wonder if they would then consider like venturing into gaming if this is like a successful. I said, it depends how successful it is, isn't it? This. Yeah. Be interesting to see how that goes. Right then, what's up next, mate? Uh, so next up, we had a little bit of a surprise that came out this week, and this is from the guys at Ninja Division and Paizo. Now, Starfinder was an absolutely amazing hit at Gen Con. It absolutely completely sold out everywhere. No surprise there. But Ninja Division are also uh, working on a range of resin miniatures that you can use to play as your characters and your enemies and things like that. And so they hit Kickstarter this week with some Ooh. awesome looking stuff for you to get uh, funded. So yeah, they've got a whole bunch of different um, selections for you to pick up. They've got fantastic heroes that are done in a range of different classes, genders, and species. They've also got some really awesome encounter packs. So importantly, you've actually got some enemies to face that are actually thematically done towards the world. And they've also got some really cool things like big monsters planned as well. And they've also got uh, some fleets and some ships uh, thrown into the mix as well, which I thought was really cool. But yeah, this popped up, a uh, bit of a surprise, but it looks absolutely amazing. <gasps> and I think at the start of the panel is actually a really fantastic um, set of painted miniatures by Angel Heraldes, which look superb. So, cool. Yeah. I have to say, I love the little bounty hunter. Go There's back, grey. I'm going to go back up to the grey. Okay, okay, the grey. There's a grey. Grey! And not only do they have <laughs> greys, but the space goblins too. This, oh, the space oh, goblins man. are my favourite part in this whole thing. Uh, I don't know. This this one here is my favourite. The little mouse person. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're so key there. What the heck is that? The Drift Dead. That's, oh, Good that's there. creepy. That looks yeah. like... Oh, it's a skeleton in a spacesuit. It's like the Abominable Bride meets space. It's kind yeah. of like... Yeah. Well, everything's better <laughs> in space, because it's in space. But I have to say, the hair's very long and the nails are very long. That's not what really happens when you die. What happens is you turn... <laughs> okay, so got... No, 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 keep going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, good mixture of heroes here. 
Yeah. It's it's I do love Ninja Division stuff and I know they do a wide range. I, I think the thing that a lot of people associate with Ninja Division is their chibi stuff. Um, I'll hold my hands up and say yeah. I totally would just slow down there just and we'll come back. Yeah. I totally do that. Yeah. Anytime anybody talks about Ninja Division, I, I think in Chibi all the way. Yeah. But they do do stuff that yeah. isn't Chibi. And here's an example of but it. These are stunning looking sculpts. Yeah. Absolutely. I love the look of the candy and cola, which is sort of their little mascots that they always sculpt into every single range that they do. Oh that's cool. Uh, what do we have for Encounter Look Patch? at the Space Goblins, this one. Look at his little eye patch, the wee legend. He's yeah, so yeah. I love it. <laughs> See, this is one of the things that I really liked about this. There's a lot of um, sort of sci-fi systems out there, sci-fi role-playing games, where you can get lots of character models, but it's really hard to find enemies that match the theme that you're trying to go for, mm. and occasionally that'll mean that you'll only end up fighting against a lot of humanoid stuff. Yeah. But because these guys are actually putting in the effort to create some really fantastic things like, as you say, the space goblin here as well, and things like that, we've got a really nice sort of range for people to get stuck into, keep the theme really tight, and it sort of immerses you in the world as you're doing your role-playing, which I thought was really good. I'm so, guessing it's not, a, it's not a coincidence that this has a very Guardians of the Galaxy sort of feel, is it? Oh, no, is no, the, no, no. The, people so is the universe not like that, that at so, all, yeah. then? <laughs> What, sorry? What's the universe like then? Uh, so the universe of Starfinder is actually quite interesting. It's actually set in the far, far, far future of their Pathfinder universe. Oh. So it's all the fantasy races have now evolved into sci-fi races further down the line. And they're sort of exploring the galaxy and things. So it's all tied into what was ex um, existing in the Pathfinder world. Hold on, really cool. hold on, Ben. So does this mean if I play a long enough Pathfinder campaign? It could just carry on into a Starfinder pick champion. You could die. Maybe. Your hair will get longer and your nails will get longer and you'll turn into one of them. <laughs> Become a creature in or, the or a, a wizard might cast a spell on you to make you fall asleep until you wake up oh in this my new world. God. And then you'll wake up and go, No, I slept too long. Uh, <laughs> if you were a wizard, you have now become a space wizard. And space wizards are the coolest wizards. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I have I noticed one thing though. There's some other little miniatures here for fleets. I like the idea of this that if you're doing your role playing mm. in the future, you don't just have to role play fighting in ships on yeah. asteroids and stuff. You can actually play with fleets. But are they not a little bit small? I mean, like if I stood my miniature beside that, it'd look like one of them sit on and ride trains. <laughs> you know the ones you get at theme parks where like full grown men sit on them. And they go wrong. Wait, where have you seen full grown men? On the, on the I, I think it may have been a selfie. <laughs> it may have been a selfie. <laughs> on the oh, internet. On the internet together. I've seen plenty of videos. <laughs> this is going to talk Ride your ride on trains. trains. What little train? What do you even search for that? Like little man, little man, little spaceship. Right. No, it popped man up rides. on Facebook. Like there was this, there's this. It was like a 1950s. Um, club oh, and, wow. and all these guys were hanging around this little train right and then I clicked <laughs> on it and it, it turned into a video of like it's a tiny little train it's about this but it's a proper steam train and there was about six of them all behind it sort of being driven around on you this you were jealous weren't you you on were this, jealous on this, yeah, yeah, on this them, track and I, and I just sat there smiling for about ten minutes and then you I wiped, enjoyed wiped it yourself far too much just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Starfinder miniatures do look rather cool to bring us back on topic. Ah, Justin bringing us back on topic. What? It's the weekend. Not, it's the weekend. Not in a subtle fashion either. Back on topic. No. <laughs> no trains. I have had enough of your shenanigans for the weekend, Lloyd. Back on topic. He's Star Wars Destiny giddy as well. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I know. Let's go back up to the top. Already done. So oh, here we go. Angel Geraldes ridiculousness yeah. that makes me sad. Look at them. Oh, yeah, you're sicker, gorgeous. man. You, you spoil my happiness and make me so happy at the same time. <laughs> I, I have to say, they do have that that want factor, especially this big dude with the energy axe. I love how they sculpted oh, that. Oh, okay. Or at least I think that's an energy axe. I don't know, some sort of flaming swordy axey thing. That you casually <laughs> hold at your side, not scared about burning yourself at all. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. I still get like a Guardians of the Galaxy vibe off of this. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. just because of the rodent you just think of raccoon. Yeah, isn't I'm thinking it? Yeah, of the rodent, yeah. but also the the what, what you call the lady who's blue. Gamora. Gamora. Oh, 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 she's the green one. Sorry. Yeah. The what blue. do you call Gamora's sister? Uh, Nova. Oh, Nova. Well yeah. played. Well played, Ben. There was a blue nebula. character up nebula. there. Nebula. 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 Look at that. That's a sort of nebula look to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it might just the be other character green because they're blue. Look, I'm not having, after Warren said, let's have a Star Wars Destiny tournament, I'm not having you turn around and say, let's play Starfinder. It's not happening. Drawing a line in the sand. One project at a time. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm saying let's get a steam train and let's all of us sit in a circle driving around out so, there. Uh, do I have to take down all the gaming tables out in the hobby hall just so you can lay down track with your <gasps> tiny train? I'm just going to say this, now, right? That might be a fire hazard. This is a very local joke. 
you know, not a joke, a local thing, right? But about 80 miles from us yeah. in Bangor, yeah. you can ride a little train, a little yeah. steam train. <laughs> I'm just telling you, if we need to have a Beast of War day out, where we all get out sometime and ride a little train, we can make it happen. Can we go to the zoo as well? well yeah. Oh. Just saying, I'm just saying. But there has to be a lot of us. Like, there's no one man wants to ride the train on his own. No, no, it has to be. Because a... you'll look stupid. Yeah, because when people want to Google the video later, they'll be like, gang of men ride little, and then the CEA will jump in and <laughs> beat them up and stop them searching no, anything. See, no, you see, I just want one of Lloyd sitting on the train on his own, just going around the restaurant going, <laughs> No, see, I'm even not going to do that, because they have a little train at the Transport Museum. Yes, uh, they do. And Anna was like, do you want to go on the wee train, Lloyd? Your, your inner child was like, yes. But... I was like, yeah, but I don't want to be the only guy on the train. What you need is to adopt a, a, a child for the day. So you have a child that goes on the train with you, and you look like you're the father or the uncle or the older brother. Well, yes. if you go there on Father's Day, you get in for free if you're a dad. Top tip. Then there's going to be lots of dads riding the trains at that point. Top so. tip. Top tip. Anyway, back on, on that, that note. <laughs> right, so basically, we need to shave Sam, make him look young again. Yeah, this is going very strange. Let's wrap this up. This is going really <laughs> weird. Right, that's it. That's the shenanigans for today. <laughs> if you've enjoyed that, those shenanigans, that's like a word that means Or you want to fun. share in the comments, you know, at beastofwar.com, your ideas of where we can go and get in for free and ride on trains. <laughs> yeah. you have a smoke, we'll get a map going. As a group. As a group. As a, as a group. We could all do, everyone around the world could go and do it on the same day and we could all <laughs> share our pictures at the same time. They will never there be alone. There probably is like a... An international train day? An international ride little train day. Oh my God, I gotta have to check that up. Right, come on. This is enough for this, right? right. Goodbye everybody, show, he's off to Google. If, if you've enjoyed the show, come on over to, uh, over to Beast 4. Join backstage, check us out on Sunday. We see you then. I have to go and Google this thing about trains. See you later. Bye. Choo choo. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.